It is strange. God says, seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will be given to you. Men say, show us a sign first and then we will believe. But okay, let me explain this in details. You got a problem, I understand that. You've been seeking for a solution, I understand that. I understand that men of God has said that you shall receive a blessing, that's fine. Men of God has delivered you from the pain you were feeling, that's fine. Men of God has cast out the devils, that's fine. You've been moving from church to church. Prophet to prophet, pastor to pastor, evangelist to evangelist, apostle to apostle, seeking for a solution to your problem. But yet the answer is right in front of you. The Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and the rest will be added to you. Did you know that the Lord refers to those who seek for signs and wonders or his blessings mostly, more than salvation, adulterers? In the book of Matthew chapter 12, the people wanted to see a sign from Jesus in order for them to believe that he was the Messiah. But not long before that, he did a very powerful sign where he multiplied a few loaves of bread and fish in order to feed around about 5,000 people. But yet right after that, they wanted to see a sign from him. But what was Jesus' response? Jesus' response was an adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but yet no sign shall be given unto them except for the sign of Jonah. But one thing that I want you to know is that after a sign has been seen, it should motivate you to basically repent of your sins and serve God in righteousness. Failing to do so can bring very serious consequences upon the return of Jesus. But forget about the return of Jesus for a minute. It has serious consequences even now as you are living. For you've made yourself a target to unclean spirits. Jesus further continued teaching the people saying when an unclean spirit leaves the body, it goes through dry places. This is in comparison to deliverance or casting out of unclean spirit that is done in our churches today. It goes through dry places looking for a place of rest. When it finds none and it looks back and remember that the body that it was cast out of is well swept and still empty, it decides to return back. Then it reasons by itself saying, I shall return to the house that I was cast out of. And it takes seven other more stronger than itself and they return back to that house. In the last state of that person, Jesus say, is worse than the first state. Meaning to say that when demons are cast out of a body, the healing is temporary. Temporary, especially if that person who demons are cast out of does not repent of their sins in the name of Jesus Christ. This is why Peter say in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now if you receive the Holy Spirit and demons are cast out of you, when those demons will look back, they will realize that the house that they were cast out of is not empty but there is someone who's greater than them who's now protecting that body who has become the owner of that body the point that I'm trying to emphasize here is very simple it's better to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness rather than blessings be blessed